Well, we're going to put that to the test right now because I'm going to move over to another game called Rapid Fire Questions. I'm going to throw a question to you. You're going to try to give me as quick as you can off the top of your head your answer, and then you, if you want to talk more about it, go ahead. So the first one is, what do you think was the worst Best Picture Oscar winner? Excuse me. The worst Best Picture Oscar winner? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have no idea. No well, let's, let's 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 keep it into the sphere of when your work uh, of the time you've been working. So, just say of the last twenty years or so. Oh, geez, you're putting me on the spot. I don't I don't have a list in front of me. Uh... I I thought that um Coda from a few years ago was an interesting choice. No, I loved Coda. Uh, Coda deserved to win. Wait, I have to. I want to answer this correctly. I'm so I know it's supposed to be rapid fire, but I want to get you a real answer. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. Some people say Crash. I mean, this fucking thing, winners. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna say. Do do do. I mean that. Ooh, that was bad. Uh. I'll say All right, I'm going to say I'm going to say everything everywhere was pretty was a, a pretty weak winner. I actually find that film incredibly overrated. Um that's just my perspective though. I I don't really get it. I sometimes, you know, I used to follow the Oscars quite a bit. Um, and I think a lot of the stuff when I was watching you on Collider, when you were doing stuff with Perry and Scott Manns and you were talking about all predictions, I used to watch that like all the time and watch the, the show and all that. Uh, you you should because I think that was like the become that was my favorite parts of the of the kind of like award season watching you guys do that stuff. Um, but then over the last several years, you know, with the no host thing and everything else, I just kind of it lost flavor with me. And I think to me, the this is kind of off track with the rapid fire kind of stuff. But do you think that the Oscars themselves, when you kind of compare it to the ceremonies in the nineties and the early two thousands and the eighties and such, it's a certain amount of um, I don't know classes has been lost a certain amount of um show business that's been lost you think they're trying to too hard to be too regular people and not so, not so much like a big superstar kind of thing that seems to be something that's missing i think from from the whole oscars experience a hundred percent i mean it's become a tv show <laughs> i mm. mean you know it's it's all just about the ratings instead of like actually honoring the people in the room and like celebrating the year in film and film history and the industry. Like, you know, I, I just think that the, the marker has changed um, for the worse. I mean, the show just isn't what it used to be. And, and I think that that's why it has problems, you know, uh, getting a host. And that's why it's just been Jimmy Kimmel. Like, Jimmy Kimmel does a good job. Don't get me wrong. You know, he's great at what he does, but I see Jimmy Kimmel every night. If I want, yeah, yeah, and there's something uh, there, there's a magic that I think has been lost uh, that I would love to see the academy bring back, but that's going to take bold academy leadership. Honestly, I mean, you know, s some of these people in these positions is just like, yeah, you're great on paper, but like, are you charismatic? Could you convince like a, a movie star that you'll take care of them and that you've got them and to trust you? Like, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, next one is pop fiction. Pop fiction still your favorite movie? No. So is there that you don't have favorite movies anymore, or something's taken that that um, that title? Uh, I mean, it's still sometimes I'll give it as a a default answer, but um, yeah, I I, it, I no, it's probably not at this point. Um. Next one, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? You know, it's quite amazing when I ask people that question, it's always definitive. It's not, yeah, maybe sometimes, you know, once in a while it's either yes or no. And the correct answer is no. So you're right there. Yeah. I mean, I would if someone was like, oh, I've got like, if I was super hungry and someone's like, oh, I've got pineapple pizza, like, all right. But like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a match to me. No, Fruit, never. It does not make sense to me. No, 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 it just it turns it into a dessert, doesn't it? Oh. Um, favorite superhero slash comic book movie. 
Batman is my favorite superhero, but favorite comic book movie is The Crow. Regarding The Crow, I had a my young, younger brother and I, we love that movie. We love The Crow. We love Brandon Lee from even before that we've um, uh, Showdown, Little Tokyo and Rapid Fire and all those, all those movies. We had a theory that if Brandon Lee, uh, God bless him, wasn't tragically killed in that movie, that he would be one of the big movie stars of all time. Million, I 20 see million dollars a year. Twenty million a picture. Sorry, twenty million a picture. Absolutely. He would have I, I think that, you know, he would have been Neo in Matrix. He would have been like a superhero movie guy. He would have been all that kind of stuff. He could have transitioned to, to dramatic roles. I think he would have been just huge, I think. Hundred percent. He'd be in J the John Wick movies now. He'd be oh, in yeah. fucking everything. Everything. Such a such a tragedy. Such a great film. Still is 30 years after. I just watched it recently. It's such a fantastic movie. A visually influential. And um, you know, for a for a young goth kid like myself in the in the nineties, uh hugely influential in my cho cho choice of attire at that time as well. Um next one. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. I'm the only one who says no, I think. Well, on that context, if Die Hard is a Christmas movie, does Lethal Weapon become a Christmas movie as well? Because Lethal Weapon is also based on Christmas. I, I mean, I, at the I, end of the film, G Gary Busey and Mel Gibson are, you know, doing the like, but Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fight with around Christmas trees and everything else in the film. I think I think under this, that criteria, then it, it does qualify as a Christmas movie. Yes, I just I don't think of it as a Christmas movie, but I'm I I think that. If Die Hard is, then Lethal Weapon, you could argue, is as well. Oh, it's such a fascinating uh, topic, that one. Um, just Die Hard is the great time of year to watch Die Hard. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content.